Uh, today we're going to talk about um, homocysteine. We're also going to connect some dots between homocysteine, MTHFR, um, and glutathione. All items that are very popular on the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, <coughs> folks that are interested in their health. And you see a lot of um, argument with the standards of um, medicine within the community. We're also going to talk a little bit about that, why you don't see a lot of um, docs testing for homo homocysteine. Uh, homocysteine is a non-protein non amino acid, meaning it's an amino acid, but we, we don't make proteins out of it. We do make some other things. We make uh, methionine. Um, I believe we methylate it to do that. Methionine uh, is... Key, it's an amino acid as well. It's key in uh, donating the methyl group to uh, DNA methylation. Um, homocysteine first became uh, known as a, um, a player in health from uh, Fr Framingham several decades ago. With the Framingham study, early on they saw um, a very direct relationship between higher levels of homocysteine and higher levels of uh, heart attack and stroke risk. So <clears throat> remember, Framingham is what we call a, uh, an observational study. It's not, uh, you're looking at a population and then trying to correlate things. That is uh, in direct opposition to a, a, um, what we call a longitudinal study or a clinical trial where you, uh, you have a population, you change the thing, and then see if uh, you get a change in the outcome. That's critical, uh, and that actually has to do with why you don't see the st uh, docs within the standard of medicine looking at homocysteine. Um, <clears throat> we'll go over that in just a minute, but first, an introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R, -E -E with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Dementia Prevention. Um, <clears throat> now, um, a, little, a couple of other comments about homocysteine before we go there. Uh, also, a little bit later, we'll talk about two other um, very hot topics in the um, uh, functional medicine area, uh, MTHFR and um, glutathione, one of the most popular antioxidants. Uh, and did you know they're all connected? So we're going to connect some dots today and talk a little bit about science and explain why your doc's not testing for it. Um, <clears throat> by the way, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about homocysteine on uh, my uh, YouTube channel and um, in the forum that uh, John Lorscheider runs for us. So again, that's what actually brought it up to me. I saw all this uh, discussion going on about it and uh, realized we needed to maybe take a little bit deeper look. Now, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is not the only study. It's a, uh, a meta-analysis. It was printed in JAMA. This is old. It was 2002, 2002. But the reality is the medicine and the science behind the medicine has not changed that much. And here's why your doc is not testing for homocysteine. So uh, homocysteine and risk uh, for, of ischemic heart attack and stroke, meta-analysis, basically what they saw, um, if you want to look this up, look up uh, Google JAMA, homocysteine um, studies coalition, and, or, or collab, collabor collaboration, homocysteine studies collaboration, and that title, Homocysteine and Risk of Ischemic Heart, Heart Disease and Stroke. So here's what they found. Uh, yes, there are multiple studies that have shown a relationship between, between high homocysteine levels and uh, heart attack and stroke, cardiovascular disease, but there have also been multiple longitudinal studies. Uh, <clears throat> most of them just used uh, vitamin uh, B2 or, or folate. And um, really, it, they were able to get changes in the, uh, in the level of homocysteine, but they were not able to get changes in uh, risk for heart attack and stroke. So it gets back to that original comment I made about a, a 
um, an observational study versus a longitudinal study. On the observational study, or clinical trial, on the observational studies, yes, we're continuing to see this relationship between high homocysteine and um, uh, heart attack and stroke and uh, dementia with some uh, a lot of the work. On the other hand, when we uh, manipulate or decrease homocysteine levels through, uh, through vitamins, supplementation, we're not getting the decrease in uh, heart, heart attack and stroke risk that we would have expected. So that leads many people to say, you know what, maybe you can't do it through supplementation. Maybe you have to do it through the, um, through the old original natural method. And again, you get your B, uh, B vitamins, not V vitamins, B vitamins through leafy green vegetables. Um, <clears throat> so... Here's a, another study circulation. It was, uh, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> read a couple of things about this because this will, again, help you understand some of the debate in the literature. It was in circulation uh, Sung Chang, homocysteine B vitamins and atherosclerosis. Um, it was in 99, a couple of years before that previous study. And again, the science has not changed that much. Since then, a lot of people on the uh, internet will tell you that it is, it has, but I'm not seeing evidence of it. If you have seen evidence, I'd love to, I'd love to see the comments. Um, <clears throat> conclusions that uh, homocysteine concentrations may actually be a consequence of um, coronary artery disease and not a serious cause. That's what many people are beginning to think, that maybe it's uh, because of the heart disease that you're getting the, uh, the increase in folate level. Now, <clears throat> here's where one of the other dots starts to, to set in. Uh, deficiency of cystothionine, uh, uh, cystothionine synthetase, uh, deficiency of methyl tetrahydrofolate, uh, MTHFR, or, uh, homocysteine methyltransferase, um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> here's one theme that you'll see over and over again, because it's true. Although I agree with Folsom and Associates, who had just published uh, one of those studies that showed uh, no change when you uh, actually impact the homocysteine level, uh, although I agree with, that, with them that more randomized clinical trials are needed, that's the truth to this. That we need more trials. We need to figure out what is exactly is going on and what's causing the, uh, the relationship that we see in the, uh, the environmental or observational studies and then the lack of relationship that we've seen with the, uh, the clinical trials. Now, here was a response uh, editorial in that same journal of circulation. Basically, uh, despite one of, and this was from Folsom, Despite much evidence implicating homocysteine in, in um, atherosclerosis, ours is not, or ours is one of several prospective studies reporting no association between total homocysteine levels and coronary heart disease incidence. Uh, Rem and Associates observed, uh, observed uh, similar things. Um, now, <clears throat> we also, here's where there is some agreement and it's uh, actually with them agreeing, and I don't agree with them. They're saying, you know what, let's go ahead and put the B vitamins in cereals. And unless I'm mistaken, most, uh, well, there's a lot of cereals that have supplemented B vitamins. Here's where I disagree. Totally different issue. I don't think anybody should be eating cereals for breakfast every day. That is, the vast majority of, of cereals that we uh, have available to us are like doing a uh, pancreatic challenge, a glucose challenge every morning when we get up and have cereal for breakfast. <clears throat> okay, now um, I, I would, I think, I would agree with everybody else that we really do need to supplement um, diets with uh, folate, vitamins uh, B6 and B12. Um, now, he goes on to say, you know what, be careful with the observational studies. We saw the same thing with beta-carotene and methyl, uh, 
methoxy, methoxyprogesterone. Um, both, however, although they worked out in the, there was the clear association in the uh, observational studies, did not work out in the clinical trials. <clears throat> So, that's uh, a little bit about homocysteine and why your doc's not testing for it. Now let's go in and look at uh, homocysteine and methionine, MTHFR, folate, uh, start connecting some of these dots. Uh, methionine is broken down into homocysteine. Uh, methionine uh, synthase, actually, uh, which includes vitamin B12 or needs it for methylation, uh, takes that homocysteine back and makes methionine out of it. As I said earlier, um, methionine is an essential amino acid. Uh, it's used for protein development, and it's also the donor for DNA of methyl, the methyl group for the DNA methylation. Folate, again, we're, uh, we're talking about a, the um, MTHFR cycle over here. All of this has to do with methylation. And yes, <clears throat> there's a whole lot uh, of debate and focus behind methylation. Now, uh, given that part of the science, what do I do? I actually have had a... a um, a methylation test, and I am a poor uh, methylator. Um, I do take um, uh, reduced uh, B vitamins. <clears throat> Has it helped? I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm continuing to feel better and better. I don't know how much of it's uh, methylation, how much of it's decreased uh, carbs, decreased inflammation of uh, my art. Ar arteries. Now, <clears throat> we also mentioned another thing in here called glutathione. Glutathione is mentioned by many uh, as a super antioxidant. It's made by the body, as you can see here. Uh, it's made from homocysteine. Um, and again, you see this methylation uh, uh, cycle up here. Um, <clears throat> homocysteine it can be broken down uh, into cystathione, cysteine, cyst uh, cystinoglycine, and then glutathione. Uh, another place that you'll see mention of glutathione is in Dale Bredesen's book, End of Alzheimer's. Um, when you go to his training course, uh, they talk about it a lot. Glutathione is one of the, excuse me, go-to um, supplements uh, used in uh, uh, prevention of dementia by uh, Dr. Bredesen with the Cognoscopy uh, Group. Thank you for your attention.